Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. I'll do it. You can't do it. No, I'll I, do I it. lose momentum halfway through. You're old. On Rare Whiskey Friday, we're going to go through and try several different whiskeys giving our first impressions. Whenever we say rare whiskey, we don't necessarily mean these large brands. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on any of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review, and thank you to the Magnificent Bastards that sent the whiskey. It's pretty well down, like, to, like, word for word, repetition. Oh. Oh. Wait, are you doing the, who was it, was it Craig Ferguson here? Who was the one that used to do oh, this? Conan O'Brien. That was Conan O'Brien. The string dance, yeah. The string dance. <laughs> All right, what do we get? So these are two bottles from Hobbs Ray. Hobbs Ray, you magnificent bastard. So we're going to start with this new make and New make corn whiskey. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same mash bill. Because this one's single barrel bourbon. Yeah, and this one is 80, uh, 90 percent corn, ten percent barley. Okay, so the criteria for corn whiskey is what? We'll start with this one. Well, so I'm we'll make you the whiskey. actual regs. Okay. Right? Corn. Whoa. It's it's musty, pungent. Yeah, I can smell it standing above it. That's interesting, man. Depending on the whiskey, there's so much variety. Sometimes you really have to get in there. And breathe in aggressively to start picking out stuff. And then other times you can hold it back here. <laughs> and it is kicking your ass. Okay, so I just wanted to give you the actual legal definition, right? Corn whiskey must be at least 80% corn. Yeah. Which, if it's the same as the bourbon, yeah. is it would work, right? 90% and 10% malted barley. Okay, yeah. And then must be distilled below 160 proof. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then uh, can be aged, if at all in uh, used or uncharred yeah. oak. Okay, okay. Usually with corn, I'm locking in, like, there's gonna be some sweetness. I'm not getting sweet on this nose. No. You, you know what I'm getting? No. You know what I'm getting? The smell of Play-Doh and graham crackers. I'm not getting the graham note as much as I am that salty Play-Doh note. No, the Play-Doh, the Play-Doh's dominant, but there's this ready, Grammy. This is grain, man. This oh, is yeah. a grain bag. And it's not, again, not sweet. On the nose, at least. Not sweet. I'm not getting... Because usually in new make, you'll start to pick up, like, you know, there's sugars in here that's going to be interesting. But there's not a lot of low funk fusel notes. It's like um, grain, like a farm dust. Mm -hmm. Grain dust, right? Farm dust just in the air. The Play-Doh smell. Some graham cracker. Oh, character. I, I actually, shockingly, not sweet still on the t palate either. Mm. I actually kind of like that. Wow. It's it's not something I would be like, I'm looking forward to having me some new make. That is. Barrett Gully Classic. Unique and interesting. This is Florida, Winter Park Distilling Company. Ooh, and then it turns, like it finishes in an interesting way. Yeah, it ends with the agricole. It ends with the musty, yeah. tangy, slightly sour, and... Uh, but it's not, sour is the wrong word. Yeah. It's dry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dry and like a toasty. There's a toastiness in here. A toastiness. Yeah, it could be like a toasted bread. Yeah, like a graham cracker. No, because there's all this cinnamon and honey in a graham cracker. I'm not getting those things. I'm getting, I'll say, I'm getting a very dry, not cinnamon sugar, like a dry cinnamon. Like actual cinnamon. Yeah, like the spice Not cinnamon. cinnamon sugar. Like the spice cinnamon. Okay, dump that, because remember this like is... Like the cinnamon challenge cinnamon. This is like, move quick, and we're going to see what happens when they age this. Well, we're assuming it's... Because I'm pretty sure... Well, the more I try that... You know, I'm not really, you know, usually excited about new make. Drink it's, that water. It's always interesting to see what a new make turns into. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of like the hell out of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's got none of the low funk notes that the distillery is assuming the barrel's going to fix. Mm-hmm. Like, they distilled this good enough to drink on its own. Yeah. And then if that's what they put into a barrel... Are we... And we're not 100% sure. If, if that's what they put into We're not 100% sure. Not 100% sure yeah. Then that's going to be interesting. Okay. All right. Okay, now I'm getting graham honey, like you were saying originally, I think. Oh, I just found it early. You may have. With my precise instrument. 
It's an instrument. You play the nose flute? I'm gradu I've graduated. That's what you do. <laughs> you start tasting, you start st saying, you stop saying words like smell, and you start saying nose, mm. and you stop saying taste, and you, you start, start saying, saying palate. palate. Yeah. And now it's not your tongue, it's your instrument. It's your instrument, or your nose is your instrument. And then, A finely pretty, tuned machine. Pretty soon, your pinky. <laughs> It's 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 a condition. <laughs> <laughs> you get so pretentious, you lose the ability to bend your pinky. Yeah, it's just as frozen just there in that position, right there at all times. It's just a delicate instrument. Oh, this is uh, got all the new make notes in it still. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the cinnamon comes alive. There's some. Wow. Wow, this is 22 months old. Yeah, I think this is the same. Yeah, it you can... The, the cinnamon just really comes into its own. No, it's mostly cinnamon wood. Unsugared cinnamon. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a lot of people that have experienced just cinnamon as a spice in and of itself. No. Yeah. It's when... So, everyone thinks cinnamon. They think candy, dessert, yeah. cinnamon yeah. sugar toast, cinnamon... You know, cinnamon coffee. Uh, wow. But actual cinnamon is a spice. Yeah. Not a dessert. And this is what happens when you get the taste of cinnamon <clears throat> as an actual spice. So, what fell by the wayside in, in th this process, the Play-Doh note. Yeah, gone. The farm dustiness, much more subdued. Yeah, I agree. And the cinnamon really comes alive. Mm. I wish I could linger with this. Oh, man. But it is Rare Whiskey Friday. Yeah, they're doing some really interesting Bear Gully. Yeah, you said they were working off of a 50-gallon still. It's, so it's the uh, Winter Park Distilling Company. Mm-hmm. Winter Park, Florida. Right yeah. That's Paul Twyford and Andrew Asher. It's a 53% on this and a 40%. Wow, this was a 40% new make. So much flavor and character coming for out of the new make for 40%. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I rinsed your glass of water in there now. Mm -hmm. Let's move to... I'm kind of excited about this one. This is gonna bring out the nerd in me. No, I don't, I don't want to scream in your face. No, please. Nerd! <laughs> you mean like you just did? I couldn't. Luckily, help. you're on my deaf ear. I know, that's why. Did this you know that? I don't know if you guys know that. So, I'm about, I have about 80 to 85% hearing loss in my left ear. Mm -hmm. And that's the side that Rex has been standing on for three and a half years. It's the only way you can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so if you in public, you'll notice when someone's talking, there's a group. I'll habitually go like this. Oh. You'll see me turn my head to the side and kind of lean in. See, and that's me going for my good ear. I'm not, I'm not deaf in either ear, but I have a tremendously difficult time if there's more than like four or five people talking. Mm -hmm. Like I focusing can talking, on somebody. It's it, no, no, no. I can absolutely focus, but my ability to to. Hear what you're out. saying, right? Right, and I'm trying not to listen to them, but um, it's uh, I have, I'm like it, get, it gets to the point where I'm like reading lips. Yeah, right. It's like what's going on right here? Because I don't get you know I don't squirrel when you're half deaf. I, I don't get distracted easily. You get really good at reading lips. Yeah, and sometimes because what happens is you learn how to pick up like three words in a sentence. Yeah. and deduce what they said. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while it doesn't work out. No, it doesn't. And then it's really and funny. And then they say something and you're like. <laughs> yeah, and then like I, she died. I like, and you're like, oh, she deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta own it. Keep going. Okay, so this is Atticus Finch. Yeah, uh, or Atticus Jones. Atticus Finch. I was going at Atticus Finch's it's from the yeah. and that's where they got the name from. Uh, is you know, Kick to Kill a Mockingbird. Um, the Family Jones Colorado Distillery. This is from Gordon Syrup and Leah Ashley. Gordon Syrup and Leah Ashley, you magnificent. Bah! <laughs> Dude, this guy. Yeah. This is Rob Masters. Okay. He's sourcing Colorado grains using Colorado maltsters. Okay. Uh, distilling in Col. This is Colorado yeah, yeah. through and through. So a Colorado. He is hardcore. From, from grain to glass. Here. This is a rye whiskey, seventy-five percent rye, fifteen corn, ten malted barley. This one is po double pot stilled. Ooh. Oh, I wow. know. Yeah. This is batch one. Ah, one. Ah, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of around 2,600, 2,700 bottles, it looks like. This a is... minimum of two years old, because it is a straight rye whiskey. We don't have an age statement on this one. You know one. what? Where the Bear Gully stuff, I was immediately able to grab specific flavors. This is a trickier one for me. I'm not... I'm land, trying to land down specific notes, and I'm on the nose still. 
Me too. And it's uh, it's like there's multiple things that have just kind of melded, melted together. It's Trying dense. To... Yeah. So it's it's got this core thread. Is it like so? Gosh, this is gonna be completely unhelpful. The character of rye bread, right? Rye bread it has this bready quality. It also has this um, the rye this kind of thick kernel of flavor, but it's not right. the right flavor. It's just that experience of a thick kernel. Not sweet. Maybe a little bit bready. Sour's too strong of a word. Directionally getting getting there, but... Yeah, this is all the... But sweet, though. There's some sweet... Nah, there's some sweetness. I mean, compared to bread, there's oh, a yeah, sweetness yeah, yeah, to yeah, this, yeah. right? Yeah. Mmm. But it's actually the kind of sweet you would describe if you would describe Hawaiian rolls as sweet bread. It's not sugar sweet. Ready, oh. ready sweet. Oh well, I kind of like that. There is like a, the barrel shows up about three quarters of the way through. Barrel shows up and then it ramps up, ramps up that tannic into the sunset, and then it starts to fade, and you're left with uh, here's a yeah, it's kind of a, a little bit of a honey, dark brown sugar is what I'm getting. I like, want to say like a nutty honeyness on the end. Wow, this is throwing me. I can me. see what you mean by nutty. Yeah. This is throwing me, man. These are I'm a fan. Well, it's right. complex. It is. It's it I'm a fan because it's complex. I don't know that I would look forward to it as like, yeah, I'm it's just enjoyable I'm not, sip. I'm not craving it. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. This is one that I would want to explore. Yes, explore, uninterrupted. Exploration whiskey. As a matter of fact, wait, I know it's rare at Whiskey Friday, but I just have to know what happens to this with a dash of water because I'm wondering if it jumps out a little bit. Gosh, so every 47% every is note I almost give is too specific. And again, these things have melted no, together into it. a new thing. These these notes have melted. I'm getting like elements of floral and some honey and some breadiness and a little bit of nuttiness and it just feels like a mishmash of random stuff because it's coming together and becoming like a, this thing that's hard to put words to. Yeah. Hmm. I uh that's complex. Mhm. Mm well done. Well done with something truly interesting. Um, yeah. Complex, interesting balance, hard to pull it apart. All right. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, we got <clears throat> so this is from Ozzy Rivera. And I, I'm not totally looking forward to it. But we're going to give it a shot. Ozzy Rivera. Ozzy Rivera, you magnificent! Bye! <laughs> This is a moonshine flavored. Bell Hound. Yeah. Sharon's Oak Shine. This is a moonshine flavored with oak chips. Oh, oak chips. That's where the color comes from. It's a from. corn moonshine. Okay. So the color's coming from oak chips. Yes. All right. So evidently yellow corn, barley, and wheat. Yeah. Supposedly. Okay. And. Corn, barley. So it's pretty, pretty classic. Right. Yeah. Now, if you look it up, it looks like he's doing like, trying to do a super high quality moonshine. Like, not a lot of sugar. Right. Right, not mostly sugar shine. And... All right. In theory, if it's dominant, it could be officially a corn uh, whiskey if he was using barrels, but the oak chip changes the category in the TTB. So this is a corn whiskey, essentially, that he then flavored with oak chips. Budget Canadian. Oh, totally. But add... <laughs> But add, uh, add wood chips. Wood chips, like this. <laughs> there's like this smoky, woody character yeah. added to this Canadian vanilla. Yeah. This high, bright ethanol sweetness with this Canadian vanilla. Wait. With oak I'm chips. just gonna check on the nose. Oh, and then the more you go back to it, the more the oak chips really start to show up. Yeah, there. smell that. It's that with oak chips. It really is. It's Crown Royal. Yeah. With oak chips. Now, is Crown considered budget? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. I didn't, never also, bought. one of the most top-selling whiskeys in the world. Well, I'm saying, I've never bought Crown, but uh, it's so popular, I didn't know if it was budget or not. Oh, yeah. So that's bland vanilla. No. Yeah. And then... It's like, um, in the oak chips, they present a smokiness that is akin to, like, the wood-burning kit. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Have, yeah, you get the... I did one of those as a kid. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't believe they let us have those. Right. It's like, plug it into an outlet, it gets up to, you know... 200, 300 degrees. 
But it's like, here, a 10 year old. Don't burn the house down. Here's a wood burning kit. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Dude, you know what? It's, ta- I, no, here's the weird I, thing. I, I really like the combination, though. It is so simple. But, no, but, but, it's simple to the point of bland until the wood chips add a little bit of character to it. You know what it is? That uh, Canadian vanilla sweetness with wood chip oaky smokiness is like a peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. They're very different things. Yeah. But they just kind of really work. Okay, wait, wait. Before you take a sip, right. again, try the Crown Royal. Mm-hmm. And then, because it's just bland vanilla nothing. Right? Smooth, though. Smooth as shit. Smooth. Now try that. And it basically it adds a little bit of a barnyard musty funk. <laughs> that crown. I mean, it's so effortlessly, like, effortlessly yeah, drinkable. Like water. I yeah. could, I, and I'm not going to because it's irresponsible and dumb. But I could, without chug taking crown a break, oil. without taking a break, chug the whole bottle and be like, what, what's up? So yeah. Fine. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> uh, add a little barnyard funk and then barrel chips, wood, wood chips. And that's bam. Take Crown Royal and add wood chips to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually it's actually not bad. No, and then the thing is, it's actually I can That is so much down the home plate right. of most yeah. global whiskey drinkers. Yeah, yeah. With a little bit of character, right? That dude, if you could scale that thing up, it's like you, it's like you added some hillbilly personality to to Crown Royal. To yeah. Crown Royal. Oh. yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, one that could sell like crazy. Again, I don't want to oversell in terms of this is, <coughs> this is a beautiful, rich, complex, nuanced. Like no, no, this is <clears throat> uh, it's simple. It's simple, but it's also fun. Yeah, and it's not it, it's not bad. Off, it's not off putting. No, yeah, not at all. All right, well that was another rare whiskey Friday. Right. Oh wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I forgot. Shut it down, man. Tony Puccio, Anthony Puccio. Yes. It's Valentine's Day today. Oh, oh, oh. Love is in the air. Oh, I know. I didn't want to I didn't want to say anything. It just would have made it weird, but Anthony Puccio got us some gifts. Oh, it is weird. All right. <laughs> oh. But look, the copper, copper flowers. Okay. Look, and be careful cuz I cut myself on one of the leaves, right? By accident cuz it's Wait, which leaf? Very sharp. I don't want to touch your blood the, leaf. The one that whatever one I you don't want to touch your blood leaf. Blood leaf sounds terrible, and you can't really sniff them to compare because, like, doesn't blood taste like or smell like pennies or something? Yeah, and copper made so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Also, good murder weapon, yes, because it could be because that's how the cops check for blood, they they lick things. (laughs) Everybody knows that. So, what he said was, Look, if you guys don't want them, you can give them to Emma and Deb, no, or your wives. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> Just got my Valentine's gift, my man. Here's fine stealing and drinking. <laughs> if you find me a fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. <laughs> and if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.